The Night Safari is the world's first nocturnal zoo. It is home to 900 animals from approximately 100 species. And it's a popular attraction for both locals and tourists alike. If you do a quick search on social media, you'll be able to find these beautiful photos of some of the nocturnal animals in the park. Today, I'm here before their opening hours for a behind the feed look. I know most of the animals are probably still asleep, but hopefully we're gonna get some early risers. I'm here with Ingan and she is the Malayan tapir keeper here. So where are we at right now? Right now we are in the Malaya tapir exhibit which is part of the west loop of the night safari and um, it's along the tram route. So what do you do here in the day with the tapirs? Every day we'll come in and then we will feed them and then we'll of course check on the animals whether they are sick, if they are behaving weirdly or not and then we'll start cleaning up their dens and their yards of the leftover food from the previous day and also we'll clean up their feces. So another thing that we do here is called conditioning. Conditioning is basically introducing an animal to something that it has never been exposed to before without scaring them with food as a reward, letting them gradually get used to it. Can you show me what the process is like? Okay, so Ingen is at the back of house just trying to lure the tapirs out. Oh, they're, they're coming! They're coming! Oh my god, they're massive! Oh, they're so cute! What are their character traits like usually? They're generally solitary mostly. They tend to be a bit shy in the wild. But under human care, their behaviours and characters varies. So right now, we're just scattering part of their daily feed out in the exhibit to let them hang around this area where we want them to be. This is part of the conditioning where we use positive reinforcement to enforce the behaviour that we want to see from them during the night operations where the tram will go by this way. Hey, Mintang! Hui! He's very curious about everything else right now. So once we think that they are ready, we will introduce the tram. We will see from his reaction towards the tram and how it is. And then we'll make the tram go in a few rounds. And then we'll see if he's okay with the tram sounds because sometimes there might be some revving and all that. And also the tram lights. And then we'll see. And then we'll try to reinforce the behaviour that we want. What is your favourite part of this job? When I started working here, I learned a lot of little quirks that these kind of animals have that you don't really get to read from online sources or in school. I'd like to share what I have learned here with my friends to just kind of spread awareness because these creatures, they are actually endangered. So by sharing that with other people, I hope they will protect them. Another animal that they have here at the night safari is the Sunda pangolin. It is a creature covered in beautiful thick scales and it's also a critically endangered species. The night safari is the world's first zoological institution to exhibit and breed the Sunda pangolin under human care. They have a very specific diet and their food is prepared in an interesting way. I'm here in the kitchen where the meals are prepared for the animals and this is Jeff. Tell us what goes into a Sunda pangolin's diet and why. So the Sunda pangolin's diet consists of many different components. First off, we have sequin powder, insectivore pellet powder and this is chitin powder. How is it being made? Over here are some of the original products. Oh, okay. So this over here is some dried silkworm. What are these insectivore pellets? So insectivore pellets are actually pellets uh, that are meant for animals that eat insects. So chitin is protein that she found in the shells of insects. Right, so it's like the pangolin's vitamins. Yep, in a way, yes. And the other ingredients in the diet include mealworms, oh, oh, oh. live mealworms, and chicken eggs. This is the favourite part of the pangolin's diet, which is the ants. And over on my left is ants' eggs. Last one is the supplements. So this is the vitamin K. This white powder is calcium powder and vitamin B. So the first thing that we do is to weigh the ingredients and these are the weaver ants that we've just weighed. So as pangolins don't have teeth, they actually use the tongue to lick up uh, ants in the wild. So mealworms are actually not part of their diet. So instead what we do here is we blend out the mealworms into paste so the pangolins can lick them up. So next up we have to blend the eggs. So the next part is to just to mix it all up. Okay, it looks very cool from here. <laughs> but actually it doesn't smell so bad. Over here I have the chart of the individual amounts that they should get. Depending on the individual, they get extra ants and ant cigs as well. So this over here, Barani, requires only 300 grams of the amount. 
Veroni gets an extra 100 grams of ants, and that's one pangolin's daily intake. So now I can take you out to the outpost to actually see some pangolins. We're here at the Explorer Outpost, which is where the animals are brought over for sharing sessions with the guests. Jeff, so what happens here? Sometimes we bring animals out and then we'll let them roam free or sometimes we just do a bit of conditioning for them as well. We try to use our targets to get the animal to do the task that we want them to and then once they perform it, then we will reinforce it with something positive like a reward, in this case food. And uh, conditioning is a new thing because actually no one has really tried it much and so far we've only been successful with a few individuals. With pangolins in general, what are some of their natural characteristics? So pangolins are really shy, they're nocturnal animals, they love to hide and stay away from people in general. But some of our pangolins are a lot more affectionate with us, for example Radin here. We have identified which pangolins are more comfortable around people, so they are the ones that we usually bring out. What's your favourite part of the job and do you have a favourite pangolin? Well first off, I don't have a favourite pangolin, I love them all equally. Every day working with animals is a different experience because animals have their own personalities, have their own behaviours, mannerisms. So every day is like a new day and I love working with animals, they're like extended family for me. The night safari welcomed a pair of sloth bear cubs named Shreya and Zara in 2018 and two years on, they have almost grown to their adult size and are sporting shaggy black coats that are super cute. We're here with Keeper Arini to find out what kind of enrichment activities they have to keep them busy and active. Arini, what are these enrichment activities and why do we have them? What do they have to do exactly with this device? So they'll have to shake the structure so food will fall down. Ah, okay, so these enrichment activities are there to kind of stimulate them mentally and physically. If you look behind me, that's where the sloth bear cubs are gonna come out. Oh, I do see them already! Oh my god, they're massive! Oh, hello there! What's happening right now, Arini? For now, they're foraging around for the food. I think they can smell it, it's just that they haven't found out where it is. No, she's shaking the <laughs> toy, so the food will come out and then they'll learn slowly and they'll repeat the thing. And why are they digging? So the food probably dropped into the nooks and crannies below of the base, so they're just digging to get to the food. Most people don't know this, but sloth bears are considered to be a vulnerable species. Can you explain what that means and also how do Shreya and Zara play a part in their conservation? So vulnerable is basically one more step closer to being endangered. And Shreya and Zara, they are actually part of a conservation breeding program called Yaza X C2 program. So in the future, they will be exchanged with other zoos and hopefully they themselves will become mothers so their babies would contribute to the gene pool of sloth bears under human care. It's finally dark and the night safari is now open to the public. One of the best ways you can experience the park is if you take the Safari Adventure Tour, which is a private tour that gives you your own buggy and your very own tour guide. Here we go! Oh my god, that that's a frog! A frog. <laughs> so this is one of our wildlife here. Oh my As god! You can see, the frog is on the windscreen, but not to worry. <laughs> this is one of our adventures here. Nabila, tell us a little bit more about what you do on this tour. So for the Safari Adventure Tour, you will actually get to explore the entire park. Meanwhile, you'll also be given the opportunity to get up close and personal with our animals, just like the gentle giants, which is the Asian elephants. Apart from really imparting knowledge to your guests, what are some of the other skills that you've had to learn just to be a tour guide? So there is this particular skill that not a lot of people know of. So it's profiling because then we will understand the purpose of why the guests came to Night Safari and then we will tweak the tour to cater to their needs. So usually we'll ask them, oh why are they here in the Night Safari? Have they been here before? What's their favourite animal? And then we try to relate to them. So there was this one time when I had a guest, she was celebrating her 8th birthday and I told them that, hey, maybe you guys can try calling out to the elephants and see whether they'll wave hello to you. But don't get your hopes up because I've tried it and did not uh, respond so far. And the girl actually called out their names and the elephants started waving hello to them. Oh. Yeah, so I felt a bit jealous. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see what the papers look like at night. We're back at the exhibit with the Malayan tapirs and literally on my right is a massive tapir that's just hanging out. 
It's apparently very hard to spot them at night, but today they're really out and about. Next up will be the highlight of the tour, which is the elephant feeding. So we will be feeding the girls. We actually have four girls and two boys. Oh, they're actually see, right there. Yeah, Neha over there, our baby. Oh, that's a massive baby. <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. Here's one. So what we are feeding them is just a snack. So each elephant can eat about 100 to 150 kilograms of food every day. Oh my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. So we are approaching Chawang's exhibit. Chawang is actually the icon of Night Safari. He's the oldest elephant that we have here. It's quite unique because he has a cross tusk. It's not as common in Asiatic elephants. So these are the Malayan Sambadia. They're not even shy at all. They're so close. So we come to the end of the tour. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned a lot. Thank you for joining us in the Night Safari. Thank you. And that's it for today's episode of Behind the Feed. I hope you enjoyed the night safari as much as I did. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And also, hit the bell button so you get notified every time a new episode is out. I'll see you in the next one.